In this video, we're going to take a look at transforming objects. Our basic controls for moving an object around are move, rotate, and scale. This corresponds to the keyboard hotkeys of W, E, and R. W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. Let's just create a polygon primitive object, and we'll just grab a sphere. And I can hit W on the keyboard, and that will automatically bring up my Move tool. Now with the Move tool itself, we have a color-coded system to describe each of the axes that we're moving in. Notice if you look at the world coordinate down in the lower left corner, you'll see that those colors correspond to our Move tool. So this axis here is the X. So if I want to move my sphere in the X, I'll click and drag that in that specific axis. Notice over in the channel box that the value shows up there for translate X. If we want to move it in the Y, we can grab the Y channel or that Y arrow. That is green in its color. Let's click a different one. We can see that we have a green color coding there. And the last one there, our Z channel, which is blue. We can also grab the middle yellow box, which will allow us to move in multiple axes. And you can see all three channels moving over there in the channel box. We also have three squares that allow us to move in a specific plane. So when we click on one of these arrows, we're simply moving in a specific axis. The middle box is all three axes. But if I grab one of these squares, for instance, the blue box, that is going to move me in the Y, X plane or the X, Y plane. So if I grab this, I'm restricted just to that plane. And again, notice in the channel box, only the X, Y channels are moving. If I want to move in the XZ, I can grab that box. Notice I can't raise it or lower it. It is moving in a very planar fashion on top of that grid and not going higher or lower. So those squares allow us to restrict those axes. We have the same type of operations with our rotate. So I can choose E. Again, that's my hotkey. Or we can choose the rotate tool from the toolbox. Now with the rotate manipulator, we also have that same color coding. If I grab the blue ring, it'll rotate around the Z axis. Now sometimes our manipulators get buried in our objects and they can be a little bit difficult to see. We can use the plus and the minus key to increase the size or decrease the size of those manipulators. So I'll hit plus and increase that so we can see it a little bit better. And we'll zoom out just a touch here. And we can grab the X and rotate in the X, rotate around the Y axis. Then we have a large blue ring on the outside of our other three axes that allow us to move in multiple axes. We can also grab inside of any one of our rings here and rotate in all three. To decrease that manipulator, I'm going to hit the minus key. And let's move to scale. That's R on the keyboard. And now notice immediately here that the scale manipulator is in line with the rotation of the object. Now if I were to scale this in the Y, it would scale in the proper direction so it doesn't distort it. But with each of our move, rotate, and scale tools, we can change how that manipulator actually functions or is oriented. I'm going to double click the scale tool to bring up the tool options. And at the top here, we have the scale axis. Notice it's set to object. This means that it will match the object's orientation in the world so that it will scale with it. But at any time, I can change this and go to world. Now, if I scale this, Notice that my manipulator now matches my world axis. If I scale in the Y, it's going to distort the object as it's scaling away from its orientation. 
and I'll hit W to go to the Move tool just to show you that we have the same operation here. So if I wanted to move this object along its orientation, I can just click Object and translate it in the Y based upon the object's orientation. Let's take this back to World. We can also manipulate our objects through the channel box. We don't actually have to use the Move, Rotate, and Scale, and I'm going to hit Q, the hotkey for Select, just to get rid of those manipulators. And I'll go to Translate Z, and click on that channel, and Middle Mouse in the viewport, which will cause the object to move as well. I can click on Rotate Y. Notice that the manipulator automatically is shown, or even scale. And again, I'm clicking on the word, and then middle mouse and dragging in the perspective viewport. And this will work in all of our viewports as well. The middle mouse is what's key here. I'm going to hit W. Now, we can also move the location of that manipulator. And the manipulator is basically working off of the object's pivot point. If I hit insert on the keyboard, I will go into a pivot point mode. Notice the arrows have gone away just to tell me that, hey, you've changed. You're now in a pivot point mode. And I'm going to grab that middle box and just drag it out. That is now the location of my pivot point. And to back out of pivot point mode, I'll hit insert again. Now notice where my manipulator is now located. Now with the Move tool, that's not going to be too much of an issue or change things that badly. But if I hit E for Rotate, and now rotate about the X, you'll see that now our object is rotating as if it was orbiting the manipulator itself. Whereas before, when it was centered in the middle of the object, we had that center rotation as if the object was on its own axis. Now to return this back into the object, we could hit insert and move it back there. We could also press D, which will activate that pivot point mode. And if we hold D, we're allowed to move this around. And then when I'd let go of D, it'll automatically return me. So a little bit of a quicker method by using D, moving it and then let go of D, as opposed to hitting insert twice. Now that still is not going to put that pivot point exactly where it was. We do have an automated tool for that. We can go to modify and choose center pivot. And that will center it in the middle of our object, basically returning it back to where it was. Now we can also type in any of the values that we want. For instance, if I want to return this back to a rotation of zero, I can select all three channels at once and just hit zero. You could return the scale back to one, select all three channels and just hit one. Or we can click on a single channel and enter a value. Now apart from the channel box, we can also do this inside of the attribute editor. And if I go to the transform node, which is going to be that very first tab, we'll see the same thing that we saw there in the channel box. And I can click on any one of these values here and type in a value and hit enter. And again, that will return the object back to its original position or to whatever value we end up typing in.